Hey folks, Quillyteen here and welcome to probably the last video for the uh, tile map generation tutorials. And what we're going to do in this one is discuss some of the more advanced tile map um, dungeon creation techniques that are used in more modern uh, roguelikes or action RPGs and that sort of thing. Uh, there's a great indie uh, game that's being worked on that people post on Reddit all the time and I'm afraid the name of the game has completely slipped my mind. I haven't been able to, to think about it. Um, that uses, it tries to generate these sorts of classic roguelike maps, but instead of using the system where we're doing, where we're just plopping down a room randomly on the screen and checking to make sure it doesn't collide with another room, um, it uses a kind of a cool system that um, ties into what we call steering behaviors. So what they will do for that, and let's, you know, let's, let's make art. Uh, actually, I'm gonna use Photoshop so I can use layers for this one. Let me make a new image here, maybe kind of, yeah. Let's go and do a, I don't know, 1,000 by uh, 400 here. All right, so we've got, um, let me go and change colors and use some rectangles. So in this version that they use for their roguelike generation, what they do is they just plop down the rooms completely kind of at random on the screen, all right? They plop down a bunch of rooms. And yes, they're gonna overlap. Now, once they finish this step, oh, could we have gotten a stroke, hold on. This would be so much better with, uh, I don't know, a red outline. Yeah, yes, okay, good. Much, much clearer. So they dump a bunch of rooms, you know, varying sizes and dimensions and things and slightly different positions, but they're gonna overlap like this, definitely. There's no doubt about it. And then after they plop down all the rooms, each one of the rooms, again, they know their position, they know their size, they check all their neighbors to see if they happen to be colliding with any, if they overlap. So let's say this was the first room, so it loops here and it says, oh, I'm overlapping here. And then what it does is it, it uses, very similar to, um, if you ever look up AI steering behaviors, it will use a behavior called avoid, very similar to what you would use for actual characters moving around that are trying to avoid bumping into each other. Well, the rooms are trying to avoid bumping into each other. So this one will say, oh, I'm, I'm bumping into someone, so I'm gonna move away from them. And then the next room, which is down here somewhere. There it is, down here. Whoa, laggy, slow, I don't know why. It knows it's bumping into some stuff, so it's again gonna avoid them a little bit like that. And then the next room here would be like, oh, I'll move away, let's assume we've actually got enough space. Do that, and this one will move, and then this one will move, and this one, and they actually only move like kind of a little on each frame, so they'll sort of jiggle apart, right? So this one will jiggle a little bit, and this one will be like, I'm colliding against many different things. The easiest way for me to get away from them is to kind of move in this direction, which will cause some overlap, but that's okay because on the next go, it, they iterate through a few times. The next go, this one might go first and be like, oh, I'm overlapping, I'm gonna move here. And then these will move away this way. And then these will be like, oh, I gotta move a little bit more like this. And then you keep kind of iterating through this until every single room is happy that they're no longer overlapping with anyone else, right? You've, you've gone through a pass where no one was overlapping. And what you might do is after a certain number of those passes on like, you know, the fifth pass, listen, at this point, if anyone is still overlapping, just I'm deleting this room. It is uh, clearly this room is hopeless. I'm just getting rid of it. So now it's got a pretty cool tight structure because actually everything will just, just barely not overlap. You won't get these gaps like before. Everything will just be touching. And this is great for actual kind of things that look like buildings. Right, because these dungeons that we create in these roguelikes, these long corridors between rooms, like they don't make any sense in, in a lot of realistic situations. A little bit in a mining situation where you might have mined a tunnel until you found a vein and then you mined out a room in that area. And okay, certain undergroundy kind of stuff makes sense. But for buildings, it makes a lot more sense for things to be touching. Um, and in this particular one, and God, I really apologize I, that I can't remember this developer. I feel like I'm cheating him out of some cool credit for his, uh, his algorithm here, is after he's done this sort of you know, jiggling about and places the rooms. Well, in all these empty spots, he actually uh, finds the empty spots and actually kind of creates almost like a series of tiny rooms like this, but they touch so that it actually creates a corridor almost, which almost turns into these thin rooms and it fills in the blanks. Then, you know, he goes and creates doors in, in logical ways using some sort of, you know, system for figuring out where the door should be. That is one way of doing it. Uh, and that was very quite cool. And uh, even though this is, I've never seen this before outside of this one game developer, to me, this is the next logical step beyond the old roguelike function that we just demoed in the previous videos. Now, 
other games, uh, and believe things like Diablo will work this way, and I know that Path, or Path of Exile I do this, another great roguelike. Let's actually make this map uh, square. Be a little easier to work on. What they do is they actually set up a graph. So, um, because they tend to be, they're, they're not um, roguelikes where you're, it's all about exploring a floor, finding some stairs down. So there's a stair, there's a downstair here, and an upstair here. Um, oops, I guess we're on a different layer, right? Downstair, upstair. If you're playing Dungeon Crawl, uh, which is my favorite, there'll always be three downstairs, you know, spread throughout the dungeon somewhere. And that's what you're doing. You're trying to clear every floor because you want to find every goodie, and then you're going to move down to the next floor in the dungeon, clear that as well, kill all the bad guys. And as you go deeper and deeper and deeper, it gets harder and harder and harder. But of course, if you compare it to something like Diablo, that's not generally how they work. They usually have one stair into the level and one out. Sometimes there's not an out. Sometimes it's, you know, like just the sort of stumpy dead end dungeon that's just there to you know sort of clear till you find the boss although again to, it's very similar where you've got an in somewhere and then somewhere you've got your goal really it didn't persist the stroke really come on why is that and then somewhere you've got your goal which um might be literally the exit to you know the other side of the mountain right this could be a, a tunnel through a mountain this is one way in this is one way out this could also just represent the boss right there's a way into this dungeon level which could be like Dungeon level number five. You've reached the bottom of this dungeon. There is the stairway in. There's some other room that has your goal. And ideally, you don't want to have it be next door. Um, if, if you're doing this kind of dungeon generation, it's entirely conceivable that uh, you've come in here and your goal is there and there's a stair here. So you go into the next room, you find your goal and you're complete and you're done. Right? In classic roguelikes, that doesn't matter. So your first room you go into, you found the stairway down. Well, you don't care about that. You still want to clear the rest of the floor for maximum XP and all this. But generally speaking, with other um, action RPGs, you, you're you more concerned with maybe completing a quest. So this would just be like, oh, okay, I guess I don't have to clear everything else out, unless you're really grinding for levels. But usually you want something where there's your, your start and your goal, and really you're trying to get the player to walk through most of the level to get from one place to another. So instead what they do is they create a series of graphs. So, um, and originally it's not with actual rooms whatsoever. We could take, um, I guess I could, I could use circles to almost represent this, right? And we've got to assume that like every circle is kind of the same size. And so what you're doing is you're creating on a grid a path from one, one destination to the other. Okay, we've decided that it should be something like this. We've kind of randomly placed the start. We've randomly placed the end. To a certain extent, they're going to be in, in sort of a random corner, but you don't necessarily where it knows where it is. And then so you've got a series of graphs like this, and they're connected. So this connects to that, that connects to that, and you can create lines, right? It's, it, is, it is a graph, right? And there's a connection here, and that's internally. This is how you, you do represent it. You've got these nodes, and they're going to be connected like this, and... Uh, probably the only thing you know is a sort of position. Um, you don't necessarily know sizes, you just know there's going to be, from this room to this room, there's going to be this sort of north-south pass. What was that? Oh, I think a video just finished rendering. Woo. All right, there's going to be a north-south route and like that. And then once you've completed that, okay, you're going to go and create, uh, because you don't want it to be linear, that would be boring. You're going to create other random branches off some of these things. You might do something like this, 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 this and decide based on various, you know, algorithms. So there's going to be a connection here. And actually what you're going to do is you're going to, on each one of these nodes, there's going to be a random chance that there's going to be an extra branch in some missing direction, right? So here it's going to go here. Here we've decided it's going to go both north and south. And so in each one of those, you create yet another node. And you're filling out a very, a, a very static grid like this. Um, and so let me back up here. This one, there's also a chance that it might get some extra connections. In this case, we did. This one, it so happens, we've also got a chance to get a random connection. It happened to go to the right, which happens to connect here too, which is cool because it ends up, we have guaranteed, we know for a fact that there's a direct path from one to the other, but now there's more than one. To the player, now the player feels like he's got choices. Um, and here, it ends up that there's going to be a dead end and another dead end here. And as long as the start and end positions you don't know if you start in the top left corner or the bottom right corner and of course your start node can also have branches that come off of it as well um, you know i have set this to be a certain size but there's no reason you can't go north for a big amount and and east and west from the start node and as the player where everything is completely black you know cover up your screen so that 
you know, you're just looking like this. As a player, you've just come down a level and this is what you're seeing here. You have no idea which way your end goal is. So you have to start exploring. Um, and this is how most Diablo dungeon maps work. And I believe Path of Exile dungeons work in a very similar fashion. So you do these nodes and then it's up to you to decide, okay, what do these nodes actually represent? Are you gonna go classic roguelike style where you're just going to literally replace these nodes with a big square room and these lines are actually going to be corridors. Are you gonna do it that way? Or alternatively, back up, back up. How come I can't undo? Undo, undo. Alternatively, you can um, you can pack these in very tightly. So now what we're talking about is we've, we need a room here. That's a bad example. Um, assume each one of these rooms is exactly the same size to start off with. In, in this graph, right? Each one of these rooms we're gonna say is exactly the same size as one another. What do we know? Well, we need, and usually these are made with pre-made almost like Lego blocks, right? We know we need to put a room in here. It's gotta have three exits. So you have a library of rooms of this size with three exits. And so what you do is you pick one of them and you drop it in there. This is, this is a, a, a room a room with three doors that you happen to have in your library of rooms and you plop that one in there. And here's another one that has three doors. So you're gonna pick hopefully a different room so they're not right next to each other the same that fits in there. And then there's other tricks you can do. Like when you find these rooms here, you've got a room with an, an east-west connection, another room with an east-west connection. So you might have an algorithm that, ca that finds those and says, oh, okay, well, instead of putting two small rooms next to each other, I've got a library of double wide rooms. This is a double wide room that would fit in like this and, and joins it up there. And it could be even more complex where you have a double wide room that's got um, doors here, here, here. You know, so if ever you find the pattern of like, you've got these two rooms side by side, anytime you have two rooms side by side with just one connection, that might be a good place for you to combine them. And then you look for something that fits this pattern where you need something that's got an opening here, here, here. Do you have a room that looks like that? You do? Great, we'll put that in there. Um, actually, a good example might be something nice and symmetrical like this. To me, this looks like a great opportunity for like a cool cathedral kind of, kind of room to be put in here, where there's might be an altar uh, here Whoa, I messed that line up. You know, imagine there was an altar here and then there's the door behind the altar and then there's three ways in, you know, to, to little side alcoves or whatever, you know, all kinds of different ways to put these rooms in. And that is, you know, a lot more work to figure this system out and to make it behave properly. Uh, and you have to manufacture a lot of pre-made rooms. You're no longer just generically putting down, I've defined this to be a room because it's got floors and walls. No, you have to have your artist actually sort of decorate all these up, which is why, you know, this is used in games with actual budgets, like the Diablo type games, but this is a way to do those. And then some of these techniques can also be applied to um, overland areas. This works naturally much uh, more uh, in your head, might work much better with dungeons, but there's no reason, if you take away the idea that these are huge like walls all the time, you can do something very similar to this with just open terrain. So most of these things, there's not gonna be kind of walls and doors, but there's a chance, like you can decide, I'm gonna put a hedgerow here because I don't want people walking off this way. Um, it, it does change the way that you, you, you generate your terrain tiles, um, but it's definite possibility. Or maybe your oversea, your overland rooms, it's just the default, you're gonna expect everything to have a connection in every direction. It's gonna be the odd case where it doesn't have um, a connection between rooms because that's where you put the hedgerow, the fence, maybe a cliff. And certainly on the outside, you're gonna want all of these to have some sort of barrier, a forest over here, a cliff over the ocean over here, a, a mountain over on this side to block people in. And then um, down here where your goal is again, you know, we're gonna continue the sort of cliff side or whatever. And then the goal actually represents the sort of uh, the opening pass to the next area. So anyway, those are some of the more advanced techniques that people use. I have not actually programmed these and I'm sure I'd have to you know, learn and trial and error a lot of things, but uh, knowing the basics between the techniques or behind the techniques is uh, I think quite cool and interesting. So uh, I will upload this, uh, this code. It should be available under this video. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.